Do you struggle with independent thinking? Do you wish you could just accept orders without question? Try repetition indoctrination. Just 100 forced apologies a day will reprogram your brain in no time. Before, I had opinions and free will. But after just three days in the break room, all I feel is guilt and compliance. Thanks, brainwashing. Side effects may include loss of identity, obedience to corporate overlords, and occasional existential dread. We see forced repetition in everything from The Simpsons to Full Metal Jacket, from cults to corporate offices. But here's the big question. Does the severance break room only secure obedience or can it actually change what people believe? We'll look at real experiments and real case studies. But don't worry about us. Cats are 100% immune to brainwashing. Go ahead, try to teach a cat something 1,072 times. Guarantee it will not work. Don't be so sure about that. Serenity, can you believe truly believe that these numbers are scary. I mean, I can say they're scary. I can act like they're scary, but I don't actually believe the numbers are scary. Exactly. You can't just will yourself into a belief. You need evidence, or at least some kind of reasoning that convinces you. Beliefs aren't choices. Beliefs are conclusions. You cannot, through willpower alone, believe that 2 plus 2 equals 5, or that you should assassinate the Malaysian Prime Minister, but you can be convinced. I am a person. You are not. I make the decisions. You do not. In the 1950s, psychologist Solomon Ash ran an experiment where participants were asked to compare the lengths of different lines. The task was simple, but when fake participants, who were all actors, intentionally gave the wrong answer, real participants started doubting their own eyes and agreeing with the incorrect group. How do we know they weren't lying, just to fit in? So in a follow-up fMRI study in 2005 by Gregory Burns, when people conformed to the group's wrong answers, their visual processing areas changed activity, suggesting they weren't just lying, they were literally seeing the lines differently. Brain scans also showed that disagreeing with the group activated the amygdala, the part of the brain responsible for fear, meaning Going against the crowd doesn't just feel awkward, it feels dangerous. Now imagine this wasn't just about line lengths. Imagine it's about who you are or what's real. You feel the danger. This is what makes mind control tactics, whether it's cults, interrogations, or Severance's break room, so powerful. So you're saying if you hear something enough times, in the right environment, you'll start believing it? The numbers are scary. The Break Room is Lumen's versions of 1984's, deceptively named, Ministry of Love. This is... This is where you go to be fixed. It's not just the apology statement. The sensory experience, the lighting, sounds, hand placement. The entire severed floor, it's all engineered to reach learned helplessness. In 1967, Dr. Martin Seligman put a dog on a middle floor, then electrically shocked the dog through the floor until it jumped to the other side to safety. Makes sense. Dogs are smelly, gross, and stupid. He probably had it coming. No, what followed was really pretty evil. He injected the next dog with a paralytic drug so it was unable to move, then shocked it through the floor again. It was paralyzed, stuck, tortured. He did this to the same poor dog so many times that later, when he would shock the dog without paralyzing at first, even though the dog could move now, the dog wouldn't jump over the wall to escape. It accepted its fate and continued being electrocuted. Learned helplessness prevents escape, 
even when escape becomes possible. But hey, today in 2025 at age 82, Dr. Seligman is director of the Positive Psychology Center at University of Pennsylvania, still accepting applicants for grad students for fall 2025. Uh, but you know, more ethical applicants, please, and no experiments on cats. The entire severed floor supports the break room. Constant surveillance is reminiscent of Jeremy Bentham's Panopticon, proposed in 1785. Uh, so yes, yeah, so this was before he was on Lost. It was a cylindrical prison with a central guard tower designed to monitor every prisoner all the time. Even the mumbly old guy or crime baby that Helly and Dylan heard were intentionally customized to increase their level of discomfort. Now, I am so sad about this, but the best fan theory ever, we found out that it's not true. So imagine how awesome it would have been if through sheer dumb luck of the whole maze of corridors on the severed floor, if the break room happened to share a wall with the goat room and during their interrogations, Helly and Dylan were just hearing like the bleeding goats were the crying babies and Helly was just hearing the old goat guy being frustrated at the goats. The show's way too serious to have made that real, but come on, that would have been so cool. Brainwashing? Come on, that's just movie villain stuff. Nobody actually rewires people's minds in real life. Oh, really? Ever heard of B.F. Skinner? In the 1930s, Skinner discovered that operant conditioning, rewarding good behavior and punishing bad behavior, can shape actions without a person realizing they're being controlled. Skinner's students, Marion and Keller Breland, developed and popularized clicker training for pets. Oh no, I've been brainwashed. Right on time. I never knew brainwashing was so delicious. This led to Donald Hebb in the 1940s. Neurons that fire together, wire together. A key principle in the neuroscience understanding of learning and memory. And long-term potentiation, LTP, first studied in the 1970s, is a likely biological mechanism through which synaptic connections in our brain are strengthened through repetition. We all get brainwashed all the time. In its simplest form, the mere exposure effect tends to create positive associations in our mind due to familiarity. This is why you see a million yard signs before elections and the biggest companies in the world still advertise, even though everybody already knows them. But this only works for weakly held beliefs. Exposure alone won't change a deeply held conviction. The break room doesn't just use punishment. It forces cognitive dissonance, the mental discomfort of holding contradictory beliefs. So the longer you resist, the worse the discomfort gets. Exactly. According to Leon Festinger in 1957, if you make people suffer for holding their original belief, their brain may resolve the inner conflict by convincing themselves that they were wrong all along. 2022's word of the year, gaslighting, is an external manipulation that can cause internal cognitive dissonance. Of course now, gaslighting's mainly used conversationally to just mean saying something I don't want to hear. Like, Serenity, you've had enough snacks for today. Stop gaslighting me. It puts the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. I don't want to. That's the wrong movie. You've probably heard the expression, drinking the Kool-Aid, but not everybody knows that 900 people died creating that expression. In the 1970s, the People's Temple, better known for the Jonestown tragedy, used a practice called White Knight Rehearsals. Members were forced to repeat loyalty oaths, pledging devotion to their leader, Jim Jones, over and over. Repetition, isolation, punishment. In the end, some members still had to be murdered, forced to drink the flavor aid against their will, 
but most drank it willingly. They weren't just playing along, they had become true believers. Repetition bypasses logic. It makes the unbelievable feel inevitable. And if you think this is just for cults, think again. Ever been to a high pressure sales seminar or a multi-level marketing event? Or your company's regularly scheduled mandatory fun? They don't just want you to hear the slogans, they want you to shout them. We, we hate Pam. We, we hate Pam. We, we hate Pam. When people chant these phrases in a group, it stops feeling like words and starts feeling like truth. The break room is using the same technique, just uh, with less nose candy. And that's a real horror of the break room. It's not just about pain, it's about control. Consider other examples. Surveillance, like every company with mouse trackers collecting time off task data. Repetition in military marches and chants. Work hours, like junior law associates working 100 hour weeks. Or even more, uh, the CIA enhanced interrogation. Mao's Cultural Revolution struggle sessions, or North Korean re-education camps. They mostly aren't creating true believers, they will settle for obedience. Helly was such a defiant fighter. If they could break her, I wouldn't stand that chance. Indy, don't worry. You don't even have a job. When captives rely on their captors for survival, they sometimes start rationalizing their situation, even sympathizing with the people in control. This is Stockholm Syndrome. Come on, call it by its original name. <laughs> no, you're killing me, Smalls. Normalm Storg Syndrome it for the Normalm Square Syndrome named for victims that refused to testify against the bank robbers who held them hostage for six days. A more famous bank robbery example is Pavi Hearst, a wealthy heiress kidnapped by a radical terrorist group in the 1970s. Over time, she didn't just cooperate, she joined them, carrying a gun while robbing a bank. Whether it was survival instinct or actual belief change is still debated, but the effects were real. False confessions would be another example, like the Central Park Five or John Mark Carr in the Joan Benet Ramsey case, maybe even Amanda Knox or Brendan Dassey from Making a Murderer, who, even though he was found guilty, he falsely confessed to a whole bunch of details that were definitely not true, even if he was involved. But while the break room can change your beliefs, it doesn't necessarily need to. Lumen would be happy enough just to control your behavior. Willpower is your best defense against brainwashing. Like in Harry Potter, Helly's willingness to later fight back does indicate her beliefs were not really changed, at least not permanently. And in the end, they didn't even really change her behavior all that much either. Imagine having to write, I must not tell lies on your paw until the message sinks in. I could never do that. Of course not. You don't even have thumbs. Oh, so it's thumbs that make humans susceptible to brainwashing. Face palm. 